Thank you. It's, it's great to be here this morning. Uh, there was a slight embellishment there. I was not a state champion high jumper. I was a regional champion, but uh, I'll take it wherever I can get it. But uh, I'm excited to be here this morning. Uh, haven't been in this chapel in, in 20 years and, of course, sat on uh, uh, you guys' side of the chapel for, uh, I guess, six years. And uh, it's great to see some old uh, old friends and, and coaches and uh, uh, teachers as well. But my job here this morning is to uh, introduce Jason Levian, who is the CEO of the Grizzlies. Uh, a little bit about Jason. Uh, Jason is a graduate of Pomona College where uh, he did play basketball, although I was telling Jason I don't know if there's any video of it, but uh, we'll see if we can get some. Uh, Jason is an attorney. Uh, he worked at law firms Williams and & Conley and Greenberg Traurig. He served as a law clerk in the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit and as an adjunct professor uh, of law at the University of Cal Berkeley and University of Michigan. Uh, Jason served as an edit editor of the Michigan Law Review while earning his law degree and master's in public policy from the University of Michigan. He later was awarded a fellowship at Harvard Law School. Uh, Jason founded a firm specializing in investments in sports and media properties and is a general partner of the Major League Soccer team, DC United. Jason's also a former co-owner of the Philadelphia 76ers, and previously he ran a sports agency where he represented professional athletes, coaches, teams, leagues, sports, and media executives as well. His tenure representing NBA and NFL athletes spanned more than a decade, during which time he represented multiple first round draft picks, uh, as well as high profile uh, free agents, coaches, and he also spent two years as an executive with the Sacramento Kings. Uh, as most of you know, Jason was named the chief executive officer of the Memphis Grizzlies, and in his role, he leads the entire organization. Uh, a little bit about my uh, personal thoughts on Jason. Um, Jason first came into my office about probably, uh, probably, probably right a year ago now. And uh, I really thought that I would have no interest in uh, being part of the Grizzlies, uh, not because it wasn't a great organization, but because, uh, you know, uh, professional sports is a kind of a difficult uh, uh, financial uh, um, business sometimes. But uh, after hearing Jason talk uh, to me for about an hour about what he wanted to do with the team, I was really uh, very impressed. Um, his goal not only was to win games uh, on the court, but to be, uh, a great part of the uh, Memphis community and, and do a lot of good by the, uh, by the citizens uh, here in Memphis. Um, Jason was certainly responsible for, um, you know, getting the deal done uh, and was able to bring in such uh, MUS luminaries such as uh, Pitt Hyde, Staley Cates, uh, and Billy Orgel. And uh, without him, um, uh, without Jason, we certainly wouldn't have uh, the team that we have today, the organization that we have today, and the, uh, the presence here in Memphis that we have today. And not to mention, uh, currently the team has the uh, best record in team history, and uh, so we, we should all be proud of that. Uh, so with that, uh, introduce Mr. Jason Levian. Uh, thank you very much, Edward, uh, for those kind uh, and undeserved words. Uh, and thank you to you all. It's really an honor uh, to be here speaking to you all. Um, I know quite a bit about MUS. I've heard even more in the past year from several of my partners uh, and co-owners of the team. Uh, what a spectacular school this is and uh, what a great education you all are getting. And so I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to speak to you today. I thought I would tell you a little bit about um, the Grizzlies and uh, how we got to this point, how I got here today, um, and a little about my background. Um, and I'd also like to open up to questions so we could talk and hear some of the thoughts or um, input from some of you. Uh, first of all, I think that it would only be right if, if I should really be introducing Edward, because uh, the, the work that he did, the work that our partners did in putting together a, a group of predominantly local owners to buy the, the Grizzlies, uh, really has been tremendous. I think it's a real opportunity for the city. And I will tell you this, I've worked in professional sports uh, for quite some time, and I've been involved in teams in different markets in different cities. And Memphis is just a very unique place. It's, uh, there's such tremendous opportunity here. And when I first realized that is when I went into the offices of Edward Dobbs or Staley Cates and some of the other uh, local partners that we have because as much as they cared about basketball, as much as they cared about 
investing in a business that was gonna succeed financially, it was clear to me the most important thing to them was this community, was how the Grizzlies could play a role in impacting this community, in growing businesses, in helping other businesses do well, in helping philanthropy throughout the city and throughout the region. Um, and uh, it struck me because you don't always hear that, but the commitment uh, that the leaders in this business community have to, to the city uh, was really profound. And um, I think we've got a great opportunity now in Memphis uh, to do some wonderful things. And I feel very appreciative that I'm a part of it um, and that I'm able to play a role uh, in the success of the team on the court, but also really the success that it can have in the community and, and what it can do for Memphis in terms of branding the city nationally and internationally. We're getting a lot of attention right now. The team is doing well. We think we've got a very exciting 30, 60, and maybe even 90 days ahead of us of, of NBA basketball here. Um, and it's just an exciting time. And in the first six months that we've been here, there have certainly been some challenges. We, we made a few changes that many, many of you may have heard of. Um, and uh, we think we've made the team better. Uh, we think that we're moving in the right direction culturally as an organization. Um, I will tell you, it was about a year ago, a little over a year ago, that myself and Robert Perra uh, came to Memphis. And I had spent time here uh, as an agent because I represented uh, a player on the Grizzlies named Shane Battier. So I came down to Memphis when Shane was, was playing with the Grizzlies. And I had spent uh, time here also because one of my close friends from law school was a, a Memphian. And so I, I knew the city. Uh, but I came down with Robert, and Robert had never been here before, and we came down with uh, Mr. Heisley, who was the former controlling owner of the team. And we walked around FedEx Forum. Uh, we went to lunch downtown. We drove out east and saw more of the city and the community. And, and Robert was so excited, that, and he's not a very good poker player, so he, he was tugging at me and saying, Jason, I'm sold. we got to do this. Let's do this. And you know, I, I didn't want Mr. Heisley to know how excited we were because we still had to negotiate uh, the terms of buying the team. And I kept trying to tell Robert, don't worry, I know it's a terrific place and it's a great opportunity, but we're going to try to keep our, ourselves cool and calm so we have an opportunity to, to negotiate a better deal for ourselves. Um, but as soon as we decided that we wanted to invest in this team, it became very clear to us that we needed the leaders in this community uh, to be a part of it, for us to be successful. And we were very fortunate that, that folks like Edward Dobbs uh, decided that he wanted to participate um, and very lucky to do that. And I think it's going to help us go moving forward. One of the other things we're doing with the team is we are looking to branch, expand our footprint, not just in Memphis, but all around the region. Uh, while our bread and butter here is in Memphis, we want to be the team for the entire region. We think that the FedEx Forum is the best venue within hundreds of miles. Uh, of, 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 it, of where it's located. And we want to draw more attention uh, and more people to come to the FedEx Forum. So we had a caravan uh, coming from Nashville just on March 9th, and we invited people to take the bus to the game and come back. And we sold it out uh, very quickly and had to add more, more buses to bring more people. Um, so there's a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm right now. Uh, you know, I hope many of you are passionate Grizzlies fans and NBA fans. Uh, because we need you. We need your support now. We need it when you graduate. Uh, we want you to be a big part of our future. Um, that's one of the reasons I, I wanted to talk with you all today is to tell you about our vision for the team uh, because you are all the future of this, this community in such an important and significant way. Um, so I, with that, I think what I would like to do is just open it up to any questions you have. I, I will tell you one more thing about the basketball team. We think we're in good shape right now. We've got a very competitive Western Conference. So if any of you follow it, I can tell you that we're, it's a tough situation to be in. We've got the Clippers, we've got Oklahoma City Thunder, we've certainly got the Denver Nuggets who've now won 14 games in a row. Um, and uh, we have the San Antonio Spurs. So there are a lot of teams that are competing in the Western Conference. But we feel like with the changes that we made uh, and with our strong coaching staff and strong organization that we can compete with anybody. And so we've got 15 games left in the season, in the regular season. Then we're going to move into the playoffs, and it should be a very exciting time for Memphis. It's certainly this moment in time is a very exciting time for Memphis basketball. Uh, with the Tigers getting a win yesterday and with our victory in overtime two nights ago against the Oklahoma City Thunder, it really is an exciting time uh, for Memphis in basketball. So thank you very much for having me, and I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions or hear any comments anyone has. Yes.
Sure. Well, we, you know, I've gotten, yeah, the question was what priority do we have uh, and what is the possibility uh, in terms of Lionel Hollins continuing as our, our coach? His, it's very public that his contract ends at the end of this season. And I will tell you that uh, I didn't really know Lionel too well. Uh, I didn't know him at all, actually, before we closed in the transaction in October. And uh, he's been a pleasure to work with. I think we've enjoyed uh, getting to know him, our owners have. I think that um, we appreciate the job that he's done, certainly, uh, because it's impressive. And uh, especially because he got, sort of got thrown a curveball. While we think the team got better, making a change like we made in the middle of the season with the roster uh, is not easy on the coach. Um, and I think he's responded wonderfully. Uh, I think the team has. Uh, so we consider Lionel Hollins a big asset to this team. Uh, no question about that. And uh, we're hopeful that he's going to be with us you know, in the future. Um, and, and that's something we're certainly going to want to address. So my question is, with a team like the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are obviously struggling to make a few game talent, how are they not only able to get two young, talented prospects like Selby and Reese Bay, a serviceable shooter like Wayne Ellington, and a draft pick, all for a mediocre forward like Lonnie? <laughs> Okay. Well, they, they like Selby so much that they already waived him. Uh, and uh, so obviously I don't know how much they valued him in that transaction. Uh, we do like John Lohr, and we think he's going to get better. We haven't seen too much of him yet, but we think he's very talented. Um, <laughs> uh, Wayne Ellington and, and, and Maurice Spates, uh, in our view, uh, were players that you know, were on our bench. Uh, we had the 29th ranked bench in the league while they were with the team. Uh, we had a plus minus. Those two guys were on the floor. Either one were the bottom two on our, on our team, meaning that when they were on the floor, our team did how they did versus when they weren't on the floor. Uh, both guys are very talented players, um, but we felt like we could get better uh, by having Ed Davis, by having Tayshaun Prince, by having Austin Day, by getting Toronto's draft pick, so that if you look at the two trades we made together uh, within a week of each other, uh, we added two draft picks and lost one. Uh, we changed our salary cap opportunities going forward because we have a player on the team right now named Tony Allen whose contract also expires this summer. And had we not made any changes, it would have been very difficult, if not impossible, to even look at signing him based on the rules. So we gave ourselves some flexibility this summer by doing that. Um, and quite honestly, we think Ed Davis is a better fit for us than, than the big man we lost. Um, and, uh, you know, we think we, got, we improved our roster. One of the other things we did by making those trades is that we allowed Marcus Gasol and Mike Connolly more room to grow and develop as players, which was important to us. We see a lot of upside in those guys and more opportunity for us to sort of define the way we play, which is very inside-out oriented. And I think the results so far have been pretty positive. Uh, we have the best record in the Western Conference since we made the trades, uh, better than even Denver. Um, and we've got a lot of work to do, I think, if we want to get over the hump, but we, we felt as though we, we improved our chemistry, uh, and we felt as though we sort of improved our opportunities moving forward. Yes? How much did you consult Lionel Hollins before you made the trade? So uh, we were in, I would say, very frequent, if not constant, communication with Lionel about the opportunities and the possibilities. You know, uh, I've worked with coaches for a while, and, and their focus has to be on the next game, on the next play, on winning the next possession. And Lionel does a terrific job of that. But it's also important to have that dialogue. So as we were looking at different opportunities for what we would do in terms of making tra a player transaction, we certainly consult with them. And we do that now as well. Yes. Uh, you know, um, I don't. I don't really. I think we did the right thing. Um, I, you know, I wish, I wish Rudy all the best. Uh, we wish him a lot of success in the Eastern Conference. Um, but, but I think we did the right thing for Memphis. And, you know, we want players on our team uh, who, who fit where we're headed and what our vision is. And he's certainly a very talented player. 
Uh, but we felt like it was in the best interest of the team to, to do this. And we felt like we got better now, this season. And uh, we feel like we're going to get, it helps us get better going forward as well. Well, John is a, a friend and, and, a, and a terrific guy. I got to know him at an analytics conference up in Boston, this MIT Sloan conference we met five years ago. And I think he's added a lot of value already to our front office. Uh, he works closely with Chris Wallace, who's our general manager, and Stu Lash, who's our director of player personnel. And in terms of analytics, we want to do more. Uh, we're, gonna, we're hoping this offseason to really build out a platform that can be very cutting edge in that area, uh, that we can get smarter. And really, our focus is getting the best information, whether it's analytics, whether it's background on a player and what they were like in high school, how they, what their work ethic is like, what their work habits are like or whether it's just evaluating their game qualitatively and seeing how they perform, we want all that information. And a big part of it today, I think, is, is, is studying data and understanding the trends in that data. And uh, we're going to do more and more of that. And he's a huge asset for us. Uh, let me see. Yes? It's a good question. So, um, you know, the, the collective bargaining agreement changed in, in December of 2011, and they made it, they, they penalized teams more significantly if they went over the luxury tax than they had in the past. And I believe it will help uh, create more parity in the NBA. Um, I think you see it in the NFL, and they've got a hard cap where teams can't go over that hard cap, and you see uh, the parity that, that's created by that. And I think that's where the NBA is headed, uh, towards a league where you can compete with anybody. And uh, the opportunity in Memphis to win the championship should be the same as it is in LA or New York. And that's where we think we're headed. Now, I will tell you about our payroll, just to give you an idea. Um, when we came in, in October, we had the fourth highest payroll in the NBA. And our revenue from ticket sales and sponsorship and media rights was 29th in the NBA. Um, so. But what we've done in both areas with the, with the, with the trade that we made uh, and also with our success on the court is that we're starting to get to the point where now our salaries for this season uh, are still in the top quarter of the league, top half of the league. Um, so our player salaries, even after the Rudy Gay trade, are greater than or equal to our competitors, the Clippers, the Spurs, the Nuggets. Uh, we're spending as much, if not more, on player salaries than they are. Uh, but our revenues are going up because we have more fans of the game and the opportunities for us to, to compete for a title and continue, continually to be uh, an elite team, we need people to come to our games. We need people to want to be engaged. And, and that's what we're hoping we can do. Double overtime? Double overtime? <laughs> All right, that's it right there. One of, our, one of our biggest challenges is in Memphis is that we've, and I think that we're going we're gonna to do very well. I think it's a lot, in large part because of folks like Edward Dobbs and our ownership group that we're going to have success. But one of our biggest challenges is we don't have as deep a community, as many people as you have in New York or L.A. or Chicago. And so we need to get the community excited about this team and, and at the games and involved and engaged. Um, that's very important for us. Um, so we need to constantly have this partnership and interact with the community in a way that gets people excited about the team. That's number one. Number two is we need to expand our footprint, as I mentioned, into Little Rock. We're showing games for the first time. Our games are on TV in Little Rock now. And Nashville and other cities around the area so that we can compete for viewership on air uh, with, with teams in LA and New York that have so many more millions of people. And that translates for us into dollars in terms of our media rights and how valuable our content is on television. So those are two areas that are very important for us. We feel like we're going to play a very big role where we are as, a, as an anchor tenant in downtown Memphis. And we want to do more to expand downtown Memphis and make that area uh, have more opportunities, have more excitement, have more entertainment. So we're focused on that. One of the things we have going for us is we've got a terrific building. And we don't just run the building for the Grizzlies. We run it 365 days a year. So we're focused on how the FedEx Forum can bring better concerts, can, can bring better acts, better shows, better entertainment. Um, and we can be a place that the community can come together and, and sort of enjoy together. 
And one of the things that's great about Grizzly games is how diverse our fan base is and how so many people from all over the city come together and get excited about this team. Uh, that's one of the things that I noticed. I will tell you another thing that, that has been great. I mentioned our ownership group. We had sort of our first board meeting in January. And you know, I looked around the room at our ownership group. And I saw Edward Dobbs on my left. And, and uh, I saw Harold Ford on my right and Penny Hardaway next to him and Elliot Perry next to him. Um, and we had uh, Peyton and Ashley Manning on the phone for the, for the, for the call. Uh, for, he was at playing, I think, in, in Hawaii at the, uh, I guess, the, the, uh, the, the Pro Bowl. Thank you. Um, but we realized we have such a great group of people, such a smart, accomplished group of people who are focused on the success of this team and this community. Um, I think that as good as our team is on the court, we have a superstar lineup of owners. And that's going to make a big difference for us in having success for the long term for Memphis. Well, thank you. Thank you all for the time. I really appreciate it. Mr. Levian, thank you very much for being with us today. It's obvious that you're speaking to a group that uh, supports and loves uh, the Grizzlies, loves basketball in general. And uh, they now, if they hadn't before, appreciate your abilities, uh, your, your brilliance, the fact that uh, you obviously know what you're doing and we support you and uh, wish you all the very best in the leadership uh, role that you play with the Memphis Grizzlies. I also appreciate your passion for the city of Memphis and for the Grizzlies' involvement in the community. Uh, they do a great job there. Edward Dobbs, thank you for coming back here to MUS on this side of the, uh, of the audience to introduce Jason. Um, Sam didn't tell you, but uh, Edward not only was a good track athlete, he was also captain of the football team his senior year and was on the dean's list throughout his high school career here, scholar athlete, class of 1989. We also have Mr. John Pugliese here with the Grizzlies, Director of Communications and Marketing. We're glad to have you, John. And I want to thank Mr. Eddie Beatty for arranging today's King Rogers Leadership Forum. Thank you, Mr. Beatty. Alumni and special guests are invited to attend a reception in the dining hall following this assembly. Please feel free to go to the dining hall now before the students are dismissed. That's all special guests and alumni and faculty is dismissed.